as we look at Caribbean festivals for today. And then we're going to talk about Caribbean festivals in general, okay? So, what is it that we know about Caribbean festivals? Have we gone to any Caribbean festivals? No? Crop over, you went to crop over? Okay, anybody else went to anything? You went to carnival here? Yeah. Carnival in Trinidad. Carabana. You, you, you went to Carabana in Canada, and everybody had a good time. Okay, okay. So we know that there are different Caribbean festivals all across the world, right? Now, when we talk about Caribbean festivals, do we think it is only about what Bungie Garland tells us? Is it only about this? Or do we think there's something more to our festivals in the Caribbean? Yeah. You think there's so? something more, mm -hmm. but over the time change. Okay, all right, all right. So is it changed for the good or the bad? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So is it a good change or a bad change? perspectives on, on what we understand about Caribbean festivals. So what we're going to do today is that we're going to explain what is traditional masquerade, which is part of our Caribbean festivals, and we're going to look at different forms of traditional masquerade in the Caribbean to see if you recognize some of them or not. So there are different types of masks in the Caribbean. We have military masks, we have mud masks, and we have pretty masks or fancy masks, and this has now evolved into skin masks. When we talk about military masks, we're looking at representing any form of military. So we see below here an example of sailor masks in Trinidad. And this comes because of the legacy of World War II, where we had American soldiers, for example, coming into the region uh, because you had naval bases like the Chagaramas base and so forth. So that is linked to military masks, which reflects what was happening in society during World War II. We also have mud mass, and mud mass is linked to juve, and you cover yourself with um, mud or paint, or what has now evolved to powder. Some people cover themselves with cocoa. Have any of you played juve? Yes? No? Yes. So we have oh, three people who play juve. Okay. So you also have the last one that we're talking about is when you have elaborate costumes and decorations, and as Carnivals have evolved around um, over time. We see this as the type of mass that has evolved. Now, also, we know that with the entrance of more women into masquerading, we see that difference of what type of costumes are offered. So, in Barbados, we have what is called four day morning, and you call it juve. And this is our equivalent of your mud mass, where people are in powder and paint. And, and all these different things. And this is usually held in the early times in the morning. Interestingly enough, your juve is very different from ours in Barbados, for example, because you start when the sun rises. When, yes, does it, that, does that, that is the sun rise. Yes. Ours starts, uh, we, ours ends when the sun rises, when you are actually jumping still. So ours is like from 12 till 5.30, while yours is like 3 till 10 o'clock. 
Yes? Yes. In the other islands, is this the case? In Grenada and St. Vincent, when is your juve time? Right, yeah. right. By the time six o'clock, go. Yeah, you go home. Uh huh. Yes. Yes, it is. It, it is a reflection of the issue of crime, right? Yes. Traditional masquerade talks about a masquerader who entertains by dancing and other antics. And usually this masquerade is in a costume and in a mask. And in the Caribbean, these masqueraders historically perform in the open air. Now, according to Robert Nichols in the Jambees Playing Ground, in different islands, we have similar types of masquerade, but their names may vary. So when we talk about masquerade, we also look at what African cultural retentions we can see. So in the case of Trinidad, we see Moko Jumbies, Bats, Dame Lorraine, Midnight Robbers, Blue Devils, and the Pearl Grenade. And some of these characters are reflective of what we see in Nigeria, for example. Now we have these names of these characters here, but in the Caribbean, we have similar characters all across the Eastern Caribbean and so forth that have similarities to these different types of characters that you call traditional characters here. So, for example, you have the Dame Lorraine in Trinidad, and then you have the Mother Sally in Barbados. Any similarities? Okay. What is similar? Right. Good. And traditionally, this character is played by men. Okay? Yes, it is. Now, we also have various forms of devils. Now, places like Grenada have Jab, Malassi, while Trinidad has what you call the devils, yellow, red, and blue devil. So the Jabalasi is one who wears chains, wooden locks, pitchfork, horns, and so forth. And you know you have a song, I think Iowa George has a song called Jabalasi, right? And you have your body totally greased, darkened, and you dance in the street. Now, Trinidad has something called Jab Jab, which is different to the Grenada's Jab Jab, but in essence, it is still the devil. So the devil is a very important part in terms of masquerade in the Caribbean. So we have the blue devils here in Trinidad, and then we have the Grenada Jab. Scary. Why is the devil so scary or the Jab so scary to you? The way they go? It's the Tony and <laughs> <laughs> Grenada also has a masquerade character called Shortney which comes and is a derivation from the Grenade Perot, which is linked to the Caracou and also linked to Trinidad. So this is referred to the person who wears their clothing with brightly, cotton, brightly colored cotton fabric. They have mirrors and so forth. So this is an example of the short knee in Grenada. Now, this is the Pero Grenade in Trinidad. It is different in terms of how it looks, correct? Mm -hmm. Right. Now, in Jamaica, in their John Canoe, it looks kind of similar to the Pero Grenade in terms of the stripping of the cloth. Yes? Mm -hmm. Right. So then we also have St. Mass in Dominica, and they have the stripping of the cloth as well in terms of how these cloths look. In Barbados, we have the Shaggy Bear, and before the Shaggy Bear was done out of cloth, it was done out of banana leaves, dry banana leaves. And the same thing is in Dominica with the pie banana coming from those banana leaves. That's how they made the costumes. But now it has evolved to using cloth, so it looks similar, yes, to the other ones. So in Barbados, we also have traditional masqueraders like stilt walkers, mother sallies, and so forth. Now, we also have in places like St. Vincent, what was called the boy boy man, which is the equivalent of a stilt man, and he's wearing a dress, right? Now, we have in, in St. Croix the Moko Jambi, and we have the stilt man in Barbados. So there are similarities that repeat themselves across the islands. In Trinidad, we also have the Moko Jambi. So we're gonna pause now. So you're looking to see what it is that you understood. We're taping this so you have it for a start. <laughs> Whatever you understood.